Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Ask Me Anything. This is the monthly series where I deep dive into all of your questions. Really quick though, before we get into this month's questions, I wanted to make a call out. I'm going to be leaving a comment down below to start a thread for next month's questions. Um, so make sure to leave it in that thread or specify it's for next month's video. I polled everybody on Twitter to see if there were any themes or topics we'd like to focus in on next month and it seems like everybody wants me to do photography or videography or creative sorts of questions. So if you've ever had any questions about how I make my YouTube videos or how I take my photos for Instagram or anything along those creative lines. Uh, feel free to leave it down below. Even if it's a different question, just leave it anyway. I'll probably be able to get to everything. But uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, so the first question comes from Threads and they had asked, how's the photography gig going? It is going very well. Um, it's been a hectic few weeks around here. We're finally, you know, as of a couple days ago, all settled in from the move, um, so that's great. We actually had my father-in-law come into town for a few days, so we were actually showing him around all the places in Oregon he's never been before. And, um, and yeah, so I've been working on that and getting set up and, and doing all this other stuff, so I haven't had as much time to dive in in the last few weeks as I would have liked, but so far so good. Um, I actually landed a really big video job in March, so I'm gonna be busy for a few weeks in March working on this big project for a nonprofit in town here. Uh, the pet photography business is going really well, definitely getting some networking and community work done there too. So all is good, really excited for the next few months with everything. Uh, next question comes from Nikeen Productions and they ask, how tall are you? I'm 5'11". Uh, last call asked, how often do you weigh yourself and how often do you have a cheat meal or a cheat day? Uh, I actually am a very big advocate for daily weigh-ins. Um, I've weighed myself every morning for the last four or five years very consistently. I find that is the best way to keep myself on track with my weight and um, I think it's also the best way to spot those long-term changes. You know, people will do weekly weigh-ins or monthly weigh-ins or not weigh-in at all and a lot of people have trouble with daily weigh-ins but for me, you know, if I'm only weighing myself once a week, you know, say I was out late the night before or for whatever reason, you know, I'm extra bloated, your weight can fluctuate by the pounds every day, which sounds like a negative for daily because it might mess with your head, but if your one weigh-in that week is, is messed up and is skewed data, I think that can throw you off when you're in the thick of things a little more. But there's no right or wrong answer for that. It's all personal preference. Um, but yeah, I personally am a very big fan of daily weigh-ins. And uh, how often do you have a cheat meal or a cheat day? Uh, because I'm in maintenance right now, I don't really have any cheat meals or cheat days. Um, luckily, I have enough calories to kind of just eat whatever I want, to be honest. Um, right now, I'm sitting around 28 or 2,900 calories for my maintenance, which is something I never thought I'd say. Uh, I think it's just, you know, I'm so active these days over the last few years, and, um, and I've put on, you know, quite a bit more muscle over the last several years of weightlifting. So it's allowed me a lot more calories than I used to be able to have. So I don't really have cheat days now. When I was in the thick of my weight loss, um, I had them pretty regularly. I did weekly cheat days for um, a good portion, but towards the end of my weight loss, I noticed my progress really started to stall out. So that was one of the first things I cut out. You know, if, if you're having any issues with plateaus, that's always one of the first things I'd recommend. And if you don't do any, doing one can actually help with a plateau, but uh, we can get into that in another video. I know I already have actually. But yeah, so you can do cheat days on a pretty regular basis if you want. Just make sure, you know, you can't be blowing your calories out by two or 3,000 calories, you know, week after week after week after week if you really want to have that long-term weight loss. So. Keep it simple and keep it subtle and small and you'll probably be fine. Uh, next question comes from JHP and they had asked, how to handle a bad friendship breakup, especially the one that doesn't have good closure, especially on my part. Well, I've had a really close knit group of best friends since I was about 11 or 12 years old. Uh, we haven't had any real drama or fallings out or anything like that with my main core group of friends, luckily. Um, you know, we've grown up a lot over the years and we live in different parts of the country now, but 
we still uh, talk pretty regularly, which is great. But I have had you know a few people in and out of my life over the years. I um, I don't always take the best approach with with that, where I'll just kind of ghost someone if there was drama. But honestly, I mean that was like back in high school, which was quite a while for me at this point. But. You know, the best advice I can give for any sort of relationship trouble, whether it be friends or romantic or family, you know, communication is always key. You have to communicate and you have to talk through things or it's not going to get resolved. So try and reach out, even though it makes you uncomfortable, reach out, have a conversation about whatever happened and, um, and just work through it and talk through it if you really value that person as a friend. And if you don't value them and if you don't want them as a friend, then, you know, just get out of there. All right, next question comes from CMYC, and they had asked tips on asking out girls and dating advice for fat guys. Two great questions. Um, so those of you that have been around a little bit probably know, you know, my wife and I have been together for 10 years as of this month um, since our first date. You know, so we had started dating before I had lost the weight, before all of these changes happened in my life. So she's seen me and been with me through it all. Um, so that being said, I, I do have a little bit of experience with dating while being overweight. Um, you know, two main things come to mind with this. You know, the first thing, you need to make sure you're presenting yourself physically in the best way possible. So that means, you know, having a nice haircut and hairstyle and dressing well and smelling nice and grooming yourself, you know, even as a fat guy, you have a lot you can affect about your looks. Uh, I always tried to make an effort to dress better and to smell nice and, um, and I wanted to at least have something going for me, as, as silly as that sounds. But, um, but yeah, so that's point number one. The, the other big thing, you know, you have to be confident. And this kind of rounds back to the first part on tips for asking out girls. You, know, you have to be confident and happy with yourself. You know, that, that confidence is very contagious and is very attractive to people. Um, so if you're not happy with yourself, take steps to correct that and be happy and be confident. And that's going to show through all of the people that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, you know, a lot of women I'm sure would overlook your weight if you're consciously trying to improve yourself and you dress nice and you're funny and you're personable and confident and happy um, you know a lot of traits outside of your actual weight will have a big impact so focus on all of the things that you can control right now and um, and get to work on the weight and that's what i'd recommend uh, next question comes from Razorback Pulp, and he had asked, if you could go back and tell yourself something, anything about creating the channel, what would you say to yourself two, three years ago? And what is the tippy top number one reason that you moved to Portland? Great questions. Uh, first part, you know, something I would tell myself two or three years ago about the channel, uh, it's going to take so much longer than you think it will to gain traction on this platform. Uh, and that's the advice I'd give for everybody. You know, even me, I heard that from so many creators, you know, during the, the first part of my YouTube channel and before I started YouTube that it takes time and it takes longer than you think. And so even going into it with those managed expectations, it still took me years longer than I thought. You know, I am, um, I'm, far behind on what my original idea of where I'd be with all this is, but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing, but it's just something to keep in mind. It takes time and you have to maintain your consistency and you have to continue to improve your quality of your, your content, not necessarily just the production value, but what you're providing, you know, are you making videos that a stranger would be interested in watching? I think people lose sight of that as YouTube becomes more and more popular and, and new creators are coming on. You know, is this something that someone else beside yourself is gonna wanna watch? Why would anyone be interested? Those are the questions you need to be asking about the videos that you're making. If it is something that's worth watching, people will watch and if you keep posting and you be consistent, people will follow and, and the audience will grow and um, you guys are a perfect example of that. You know, not that I think I'm some guru of uh, making the most amazing videos ever. I'm consistently irritated with my quality from the previous month or two. So you always need to be improving. And if you're not embarrassed by your older content, you probably need to be working harder at improving it. Um, that's my opinion, at least. 
And uh, what's the tippy top reason I moved to Portland? I'd have to say the nature. You know, the, the nature around here in proximity to the city is unlike anywhere else I've ever been. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of bigger cities back when my band used to tour and just from general traveling. You know, so I've been to Atlanta and San Francisco and I'm from Detroit and I've been to Chicago and been to New York and, and going to all of these cities. You know, there's something to be said about the charm of Portland. But the bigger thing is just that proximity to nature is incredible. You know, I can go drive, you know, an hour and a half and go hang out on the ocean for a day and come back before the sun sets. Or I can go drive a couple hours east and go to the desert. Or I can walk from my apartment into a 500 acre forest that is more beautiful than most forests I've ever seen. Uh, so being so close to all that stuff really sell, sold it for me. All right, so the next question comes from Ivan Uzlak, and he had asked, what are your biggest insecurities? Uh, this is a tough one, you're right, Ivan. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, I spent a good several minutes thinking about this question, and um, to be honest, my biggest insecurity was always my weight, and now that that is gone, I feel like I don't have that glaring insecurity that I used to. You know, I have a few other things, and I'll get into that in a second, but. My weight was always my, my big insecurity and I used to be so self-conscious about how I looked and um, so embarrassed with myself. You know, and I'd really dwell on that and I would use that as an excuse for every little problem and insecurity I had in my life in other areas. You know, I think overweight people blame their, their weight on all of their problems and, and when you strip away that to hide behind, it, um, it really forces you to acknowledge a lot of the other things that you have going on in your life that you might have issues with or, or have been avoiding, um, you know, mental struggles, things like that. So I feel like since the weight has come off, I've, I've grown so much as a person and I've changed, you know, probably a couple of times over. You guys have been with me through the entirety of my maintenance almost. You know, I started this channel just a few months after I'd finished losing the weight, so I was fresh. And, um, and I feel like I'm a very different person now compared to back then. You know, nowadays, the, um, the only real answer I can come up with is, you know, not being my best or doing my best or, or putting my best foot forth. I'm my own worst critic and I compete with myself so much and I can get really hard on myself for not pushing hard enough and working hard enough and um, I'm always striving to be the best. Sometimes I have to, to rein that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so sometimes I do worry about, you know, not feeling like I'm good enough. But I'm lucky enough to have such an amazing support system in place from, you know, my wife and my family and friends, but also this channel here. You guys have no idea how amazing it is to wake up every morning and, and kind of have that big cheering section that, uh, that helps keep you motivated and in check and, um, and continuing forward towards your goals. So, so that was a very long-winded answer. Hopefully you got some good info in there. But the, um, the last question comes from Eric Grayson, and he had asked, what type of atmosphere do you enjoy the most? So I'm not sure exactly what you mean by this, but um, if I had to guess kind of environment and, um, and mentality and, and space, for me, it's always quiet and calm and peaceful and, um, and solitude and all of that sort of stuff is, is always the, the type of atmosphere I prefer to be in. I like quiet, I like being by myself, you know, even compared to, you know, I enjoy spending time with my wife and being with little Wolfie and, and doing stuff with him, but quiet alone time is something I cherish so much, especially as my schedule has gotten so much busier with adulthood. Um, but yeah, so I always prefer to be alone when I can or prefer small groups, quiet groups. Uh, yeah, that's always my favorite. But that is gonna be it for the questions, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed this month's episode. Be sure to leave your comment down below if you do wanna be featured next month. Uh, make sure to specify it's for the AMA or for the Q&A, just so I know to save it and not answer it right then and there in the comments. But thank you all so much for the great questions and taking the time to watch this. Until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.